And the additional thing that I planned for the, the DITAs 5 through 8, uh, not only will they have uh, more intelligence, but they will also be able to send me an email uh, or a message if someone needs further help than what the DITAs can provide. And so that way, you know, they can be in touch and I can follow up with those individuals. And so the and objects the, uh, can be, the, uh, the, the DITAs can get smarter if somebody asks a, ask a question they can't answer or don't answer satisfactorily. You know about that and you can fix that if you, if you want to. Correct, correct. And, and also, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, each of these DITAs can also do other things. They can give landmarks, they can give objects, they can give note cards. DITAs are NPCs that are specialized, just like all of the garden attendants are NPCs that are specialized. Yes, I based a lot of this work on the Setter Farm Project, but I modified that so that each of those garden attendants don't do all the same thing. You know, one of them is only the, the one that goes and checks on the corn, and another only checks on the trees and so on. So the same concept applies to the DITAs. You don't want all the DITAs to be the same. You want them to be different. But Selby makes the, the second point, which I think is really important, is users interacting with a box is far different than users interacting with a DITA that looks like a person. You know, if I'm going to interact with a chair or I'm going to interact with a sphere, that's an entirely different level of immersion than interacting with an NPC that looks like another avatar that, you know, even though I know it's not real, it still feels more comfortable. We begin as people, we begin to personify the NPCs. We refer to them with pronouns. We don't refer to them as an it, or at least most of us don't. Some do, but most of us don't. Uh, we refer to them in whatever gender they present, right? Yep. So we're, we're personifying uh, these NPCs in the environment and that actually helps create the level of immersion that we want them to experience. And by the way, for, for the grade school, or actually maybe K-10, uh, you, you don't have to use a human, you can use a dog. Uh, right. And the, the, uh, or you can use a, an animal that's relevant to the instruction. Uh, and and or, I think the kids will that will go over well with kids. They some they like they may like to talk to dogs better than they do to adults. Yeah, and and another thing that would be popular with kids is R two D two, right? Uh, they they know R two D two from Star Wars, and you know being able to talk to R two D two or another type of robot that uh, they may remember from another series or movie or something. Uh, this allows them to have some familiarity, and that's the other thing that I do with my build. I always try to add some level of realism and familiarity, whether it be wind socks or uh, light preservers, uh, where I place the helipads, the size of the helipads, the warning markings, all those things that are familiar in the real world environment. By adding those components into the virtual environment, I am actually creating a higher level of immersion for the users to experience. So that's kind of all I have, and I hope you all uh, enjoyed it today. I thought it was very useful. And this place is open 24-7. You can come back anytime. You can bring your friends. You can show other people. Uh, you can fish. You can dance. You can relax on the beach, ride the jet skis. And this region is a 4x4 four four region. There's a lot of content here. Uh, a lot of freebies here. So feel free to come back and explore anytime. Uh, and if there's something that you need that you can't find, feel free to message me and I'll see if I can help out.